G'day everyone, we're uh, still on vector equations of a line and working with vector equations. So I thought I'd do a, a question here. Uh, and I've stolen some data from a, a particular question. They set it up slightly differently in the question. They said, oh, you know, ship A starts at this point and they're heading in this direction and ship B and C. I put them into this format. It's a little neater to see what's going on. Um, now I'll just read what the question says. It says, prove that if the boats continue with their velocities, Two of them will collide, stating which two, the time of collision, and the position of the collision. So we know, well, we're pretty sure anyway, they're suggesting that two will collide, the third one won't. So a bit of a sketch is always going to be handy to kind of see where things are going. I'll try and follow through with the colour coding in uh, A, B, and C here. So I've put in uh, A already, minus 23, 3, and it's moving pretty quickly this way but only slightly that way. So I've kind of dashed in, if you like, I'll rub this out in a second, but I've dashed in 18 and 4, okay, to kind of show where am I going with it, okay? I don't want to confuse the diagram, but this is kind of like one lot of time or one lot of lambda. Now, in this case, it's in kilometres per hour. So after one hour, this boat would have moved to there. After another hour, it would be here, another hour here. But by doing up the first hour, it'll give me a visual as to where is it heading. And I'll kind of be able to look at my sketch and go, well, I think it might be these two that are colliding. So this one is 7 and 30. So 7 here and then 30 here. And it's moving at 12 minus 10. So it's moving this way at 12, this way at minus 10. So we're coming down. So 12, I might say, well, what would that be? That would be then 19. So I'm going to say 19 is about there. So it's got to come to roughly in line with that. And then here it would be at 20. So there's 30. 20 would move it down to about there. All right, something like that. So that would be where that one is moving to. Now, because this is 12 and 10, forget the negative, it's roughly a 45 degree line. So I look at that and say, yeah, that's about right. This one, rise over runs, 4 over 18. What's 4 over 18? 2 over 9, 0.222. Yeah, that's about right. Give, give or take a bit, I'm, I'm on, on the ballpark. Let's do the red one, uh, third one. 32 and 30. So 32 would pitch me just outside here. Minus 30 would put me down here. So that's my starting point. And I'm moving, oh, my diagram's going to need a little more here. I'm moving 2 in that direction. So not very much in that direction. And 14 up. So from minus 30, I'm going to get to minus 16. So I'm going to say about, about there. Uh, so this is where I'm heading there. Okay. Now, hopefully already you can see that based on that and based on that, if I add one more lot of time, I'm going to be there. This one is, is going, to, it's going to miss. I'm pretty sure the green and the black one, A and B, they're going to miss each other. These two probably, or they might collide way off over there. They might collide. But are these two, these two are probably not. Because look, if I add, say, three lots of this, one, two, three, I'm up here somewhere, and three lots of that, one, two, three, I don't think they're going to collide. I, I really don't think that these two are going to collide. And I don't think that these two are going to collide. So it only leaves these two as the possible ones to collide. Now, you might say, oh, look, I wouldn't worry about that. I, I'd just do all the number crunching. And you can, but you potentially have to do one, two, three lots of number crunching. Yes, your calculator can do it. Uh, whereas a quick sketch, I can go, I'm fairly certain these are going to be the ones. I might be wrong. My sketch might not be completely accurate. But these are the most likely ones. They're kind of traveling at a similar speed. Square these two and square these two. They're traveling at a similar speed and they're pointing in a direction that may well have them cross over. So let's see. If I'm going to do A and C, I'm going to write minus 23 plus 18 lambda equals 32 plus 2 lambda. Let's get that going. I'll color code it if I can. Minus 23 plus 18 lambda equals uh, 32 uh, plus 2 lambda. Okay, 
Move him over, I get 16, my color coding's gone, I'll just follow on in black. 16 lambda equals, move this one over, what do we get? 55. So therefore, lambda equals 55 over 16. Whatever that is, uh, 16, 32, 48, 3 and a bit, right? 3 and a bit. Okay, so 3 and a bit seems to work for the I components to be equal. So after 3 and a bit, they should be equal. Okay, well, let's see this. Now, think about this. This is a 2. So we're not really moving this one. Maybe this one's a little inaccurate. Maybe it should be a little bit of a higher angle to get the visual going on a little bit better. Which, with a slightly higher angle, maybe this is possible, but I still think that that's going to have moved past before that even gets close to 30. Okay, again, let's see. So that one seems all right between those two. Let's now do the J component for A and C, and let's see if this works. So minus, oh sorry, three plus four lambda, uh, here we go, uh, three plus four lambda equals uh, minus 30 uh, plus 14 lambda. Right, so what do we got? Move him over, we're going to get uh, 10 lambda, uh, minus 10 lambda actually over here, equals, move this over, I'll get minus 27, uh, no, I'll get minus 33, so therefore lambda equals, well, minus 3.3. So these, well, maybe they're okay. Let's do this one. 16, 32, 48. So that's going to be equal to 3. 48 will leave 7 sixteenths. Right, so it's going to be pretty close, but it's not going to, it's not the same. Okay, 3.3 .3 is not the same. Assuming I haven't made a mistake with the numbers. So this doesn't look like this and this are going to collide. Okay, fairly certain this one doesn't, although I said that at the start about the other one. Let's try this one here. Let's see where we go with that. So let's see if we can just leave the red numbers there. I'll get rid of that. Leave the red numbers there because I still need those. Uh, so now I'm going to go with the green. So it's 7 plus 12i over here. Uh, 7 plus 12, whoops, 12 lambda. So what are we going to do? Bring this over. I'm going to get 10 lambda over here. Uh, and I'm going to get 39, no, I'm going to get uh, minus, so it's going to be 25. So that would be lambda is 2.5. Okay, well, that, that, uh, that's kind of looking promising. It's a neat number. Maybe they're onto something there. Over there, I'm going to have 30 minus 10i. That's 30 minus 10 lambda, not 10i. Right, so... Now that one, uh, what do we got there? I don't think that's going to work. Hang on, I've made a mistake. 30, no, we're good there. All right, so what do we got? So move that over, I'm going to get 24 lambda. Move that over, I'm going to get 60. I think we're in the same ballpark here. Two and a half, yes we are. Yes we are. 60 divided by 24 is going to be two and a half. Right, well I was wrong. I was thinking these ones were the chance. These two, yeah, these two are the ones that are going to collide somewhere over here. Now it's after two and a half hours in this case. So your first answer is going to be after two and a half hours. Now we've got to figure out where it's going to be. It doesn't matter which one we put it into, both will work out for us. I'm going to use this one here. So therefore I'm going to say R uh, collision is going to equal. So 32 plus, it's, this is going to be two and a half, so two and a half times five, two and a half times two is five. So this is going to be 37. And then here, two and a half of 14, well, two is going to be 28. Half is seven. Two and a half, uh, 14, sorry. Two is going to be 28. Half is seven. 35 there. Minus 30 plus 35 is going to be plus five. Now, as a quick check, well, maybe not quick, but let's go here. Two and a half times that. Two times that is going to be 24. Another half is going to be 30. 37, yes. Two and a half of that is going to be 25. 30 minus 25, yes. It is going to work. So the question said, uh, which two will collide? So it's going to be, uh, therefore, what do we have? R, B, 
and RC collide. Um, the timer collision. Now, the question said from 8 a.m. This is where they started at 8 a.m. So two and a half hours would say 10.30 uh, a.m. Right? And, uh, and the position of their collision. Okay? Part B says, how far away will the third boat be from the scene of the collision? Right, well, that, that's not so hard a question. Because this is the third boat. This guy didn't, he, he missed. They, they missed each other, you remember? So putting two and a half in here, let's go, let's find RC at two and a half. So 18 times two and a half is going to be 36 out another nine, 45. So 45, here we've got minus 23, so I think we're going to have 22 left over. All right, 22 I, so minus 23, add 45, yes, that's going to be 22. Here times two and a half is going to be 10. Three plus 10 is 13. Now this is a good double check because uh, I'm sure that RC or boat C doesn't collide because the collision happened here, they're definitely away from that. How far away? Now we've got to be careful. How far away? We can answer this in two ways. We could just go that one minus that one and that would give us a value. I'll put it over here. Actually no, I'll come back over here, I'll get rid of this. We know this now. Uh, I'll get rid of this. So, what I could do is I could say R collision minus RC, uh, and that would be 37 minus 22 uh, plus uh, 5 minus 13. And then that would say, what have we got there? 15I uh, plus, no, minus, minus 8J. Now, I could answer like that, and that would be absolutely fine, because I'm giving a, a vector... Uh, equation, if you like, as to the difference between the two. It does say how far away will the third boat be. Well, this is our vector idea, but we may well need to say, therefore, let's work out the absolute value of that. So let's work out the square root of these ones squared. So therefore, this would be that one. Now, 15 squared is 225. Let's see how I can do here. This is 64. So what have we got? 289. That's 17, I think. There we go. So, 289. I'm sure that's 17. Uh, 15, 16 would be 256. 17 is 289. Yes, it is. So there we go. So it would be 17, in this case, kilometres away. So after this collision happens, you get on the, on the radio and radio to boat C and say, there's been a collision. Please head straight to this direction, this, this, this point, and you are 17 kilometres away. Please get there as soon as you can. You could work out how quickly boat uh, C was travelling, oh, sorry, boat A was travelling before. That would just be 18 squared plus 4 squared and then the square root of it. You could figure out how fast they were travelling in this direction. And when they adjust to go to this place, you could then do the distance between there, oh sorry, there and there, which would be the 17, divide that by this one, and that would give you how long they're going to take to get there. Hence then you can relay to A, a B and C, saying, hold on fellas, do everything you can, we've got boat A, they're on their way, they'll be half an hour or an hour or whatever. Now, because it's 18 squared, 18 is already bigger than this, so it's going to be less than an hour. 18 squared, 324, is it? Uh, I think, uh, no, 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 whatever 18 squared is, plus uh, 16, so that's, a pro yeah, plus 16. So that's going to come out at about 18.23, something like that, kilometres per hour. They've only got 17 kilometres to do. They should be there inside the hour. Lots in this one. Hope this one's been of advantage. It really is a very easy exam question. Here you go. You could waste 20 minutes on it if you don't know where you're going. If you know where you're going, it's pretty quick, and the calculator does a lot of these calculations for you. Please have a look at this question. Please do it. Enjoy it. See you later, guys. Thank you.